chapter 3 verse 42 this is the second last verse um i i um Bhagavan Shri Krishna is continuing to answer the question Arjuna asked in 336, um, what compels us to sin, even though we know it's wrong. And so here he gives this um, explanation that I had not seen, I've heard before, but I had not known that it is directly spoken in the Gita. So, um, um, okay, um, I've had a very... A kind of intense day so I'm not feeling very present right now and it's very late it's 2 a.m um, because I was sleeping all day um, I had an incredible conversation last night which made me realize that I have been putting a lot of huge big rock boulders in on my path in front of me on on my path in life in many many different ways and also in spiritual growth and not to say that I've not had spiritual, I've had a lot of spiritual growth over the year plus that I've uh, been involved in Krishna consciousness. And I've also felt that I've put a huge number of road boulders in front of me because I'm like, I don't understand this or I don't understand, like, like verse chapter 9, verse 32, where Krishna says women are of lower birth. That just, I mean... It, it hurt and then um, there are many different places where Prabhupada talks about things and I, I get triggered and I've just been I've realized that I've been putting a lot a lot of boulders so when I was younger when I was 14 or 13 or something I read a book by Swami Vivekananda and he said that when you're trying something give it your entire everything Go for it. Go for go for whatever it is that you're trying. Give it everything you've got. Trust it. Give it your heart and soul and then decide whether it's good for you or right for you or whatever. So um, at that time I had, I, I didn't resonate with Swami Vivekananda so much at that time, but there was somebody who came in from ISKCON and had spoken. So I decided to give ISKCON my, my all and I did. I was chanting every day, all day. Um, for two years from 14 to 16 and then at 16 I decided I don't believe in God I've tried I've given everything I've gotten I've, I've had and I don't believe in God so I, I ended it and I became an atheist like I, I I realized I was an atheist all along pretty much I didn't really believe in God I was trying to believe in God but I didn't really believe in God but I tried two years I gave everything that I had so I kind of realized that like last night after the conversation and this morning that I want to go back to that right now. I want to be able to just completely trust everything that Prabhupada is saying because right now I get triggered or I or I, I have blocks around it or I, I like you know I have I have a lot of distrust um, of of the Shastras in general like the Bhagavad Gita is the only one, so far at least, which I really like. Krishna, I, I have a, a lot of trust for. So even despite the 9.32 verse, which is which does not sound right to me at all, um, it, it sounds, it, it just, it makes me wonder what's going on. I, it, yeah. So despite that, um, I have basic faith in Krishna because the way Krishna treated women was just incredible. The way he treated all the gopis, the way he treated Radha. I mean, he didn't have trouble going up to Radha and touching her feet or, you know, going after her and, and making her feel better because she was upset about something or, you know. Um, she would, and all of these were games, of course, that they were playing for each other's pleasure because they loved each other so much that um, it's not like she was really mad at him and and whatever. She was doing this for his pleasure, and he was doing this for her pleasure, and they were. Uh, it it was beautiful, but yeah, Krishna did not treat her like a subordinate in any way, right? I mean, he he would very gladly go touch her feet and he would just um, it, it was amazing um, so I trust Krishna and I trust I, I don't know why the 9.32 is but I don't care so so that that 
emotion that I have for Krishna, I decided to extend to Prabhupada. And I, I decided to extend to Prabhupada for my own growth because I have this... I, I want to give everything I've got. I want to try with everything I have. I don't want my mind and my intellect and my brain to stop me from my spiritual growth. I don't want all these blocks to stop me from my spiritual growth. I want to understand. Yes, I want to understand. And I want to study the text and I want to read Prabhupada with this. So for that, I have started reading Lilamrit a few days ago. I'm reading one chapter every day. I, I missed um, today. But yeah, I, I'm pretty much reading one chapter every day. And I'm going back to the through the Bhagavad Gita verses that I've done so far and reading the purports by Prabhupada because I've not been doing that. I've been reading the purports by um, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu and by Swami Mukundanand, but not by Prabhupada. So I'm going to I'm going back over those because I want to read them and I want to understand them. And I've gotten some in, insight, some information, some um, understanding of what he might mean about something. So in light of that, I want to read that. And I'm going with this um, with this emotion that I want to understand. Please, God, I know I, I may not understand. I know I have blocks, but please help me understand. Please, please, please help me understand. And uh, I, I want to understand so that I can come closer to you in a faster way. I want to understand so that I can be your servant, so that I can, I can, I can, I can love you, right? That's Krishna Prem. Love. The ultimate goal is Krishna Prem. The ultimate goal is building love for Krishna. So I want to build love for you, and. All of these efforts that I'm doing, I'm doing so that I can build love for you. So please help me build love for you. Um, and please help me approach all of these texts and all of these shastras that trigger me so much. Please help me approach them with a sense of humility and with a sense of um, surrender so that I can... I can truly understand their meaning and from a knowing place of knowing and not block myself from a place of my intellect. Um, okay, so yeah, <laughs> that went on a very different direction. Um, let's uh, let us all together sing um, verse 42, chapter 3. Indriyani paranyahur, Indriyabhya param manaha, Manasastu para buddhir, Yo buddhi paratastu saha. So, translation is The working senses are superior to dull matter, the mind is higher than the senses, intelligence is higher than the mind, and the soul is higher than the intelligence. So, super soul is greater than the soul, which is greater than intelligence, which is greater than mind, greater than senses, greater than sense object. Um, okay, so let's go to word by word. Indriyani Paranyahur. Senses are superior, are said. Indriyabhya param manaha. More than the senses are su is superior than the mind. So, senses are superior. Senses are, are um, um, I don't know where dull matter is. More than the senses is the mind. Manasa tu para buddhir. More than the mind is, is superior, the intelligence is superior. Yo buddhi paratas tu saha. More intelligent than the, more than intelligence, what is superior is he. And then he here is, um, try, he's uh, saying that means the soul. So the super soul he's added here, but from here is where the Gita verse exactly is. Um, okay, so let's read Swami Mukundanand. The senses are superior to the gross body the su and superior to the senses is the mind. Beyond the mind is intellect and even beyond the intellect is the soul. Okay, so that's it for today. Let us uh, do the last verse tomorrow, chapter 3, verse 43. Wish you all a very, very beautiful day. Radhe, radhe.